I wonder if there's any good loot. What's that supposed to mean? Ooh, glad I managed to escape that stampede. I bet you're wondering what those weird animals were. According to my scientific advisor, they're part of the Oxygen Not Included mod. Or Oni for short. What's Oni? Well, it's a mod based on the titular game, another colony simulator like RimWorld. The Oni mod adds all the creatures, plants, and meals from that game into RimWorld, along with a few other cool features. You're basically getting two games in one. I'll be walking you through some of the finer details of this mod and its features, but before we dive in, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. So, first up, let's talk about creatures. Oni has a large variety of creatures that provide functions ranging from biological light bulbs to producing fuel from the air they breathe. Each creature type is further differentiated by morphs, genetic variations that allow them to produce different products and have different behaviors. Notably, with a few exceptions, most of these creatures and their morphs can either be found in the wild, hatched from eggs, or bought from traders. Creature number one, the hatch. The hatch is a strange, faceless creature with a huge mouth, genetically engineered to consume pretty much anything and produce coal, a valuable alternative to chem fuel. It has the following stats. Notably, the hatch does well in most temperate climates and is easy to train, so you shouldn't have too much trouble breeding or raising them. The hatch morphs are the sage, stone, and smooth hatches, which all live in the same biome but consume and produce different materials. For doubled coal output, the dendrovore sage hatch is your best bet, while the stone hatch morphs into the smooth hatch, which can produce steel instead. Not all creatures are docile and easy to tame, though. Despite its cute appearance, the pip is a dirt-producing, wood-eating creature that likely won't listen to you, unless you put in a significant effort to train it. You can find the pip in forested areas, and it has no moss. To be honest, the pip isn't that useful, since dirt is mainly used to produce mush bars, a last resort for food when your supplies are gone. But it is cute, so there's that. Next up, the... Hey, who turned off the lights? Can someone bring me a torchlight, please? Thank you. As you can see, the shine bug is a light producing insect that resembles a light bulb. Its eggs can be used to craft glow pods, which are basically torches, and it comes in a huge variety of morphs in different biomes. Note that unlike other creature morphs, the shine bugs variants are purely cosmetic and don't offer any advantages or disadvantages over each other. Now, before we continue with this guide to the oxygen not included mod, if you're enjoying the video so far, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel. That way you can get updates and guides on lots of mods like these. Okay, so we have the light. Now we need something to make clothes and textiles. Can't go around naked, can we? That's where the Dreco comes in. I'm not quite sure what it is. Some kind of multi-eyed lizard, maybe. But regardless, it has the ability to convert consumed plant matter into reed fiber textiles. The Dreco cannot be trained, but can be found in swampy areas. Oops, wrong swamp. Anyway, the Dreco stats are as follows. It has only one morph. The glossy Dreco, which produces plastic instead of organic fibers, allows you to create plasteel and synth thread. So far, all all the creatures have been docile and at worst pranksters like the pip. What if you want something that can be trained to fight back and defend your base? Well then you should check out the poke shell. It's a crab like creature found in desolate places like arid shrublands and tundras that can convert the vegetation matter it eats into sandstone, which while also being able to fight off enemies, the poke shell has no morphs. Resource production and fighting, pretty handy two in one deal, eh? Of course this comes with the trade off of the poke shell being hard to train, but you're not gonna let that stop you, right? Okay, maybe that was a bad idea. Let's move on to the next creature, the Puffed. Puffs can float, as you can see, and consume the air around them to produce various solid materials, primarily slime. Like the Dreco, they prefer the comfort of swamps as well as cold bogs and come in three different morphs, each with its own ideal biome and product output. The Squeaky Puffed, which thrives in forest and produces bleachstone. The Dense Puffed, a temperate and arid shrubland dweller producing oxalite. And the Prince Puffed, which produces bleach sandstone. Oxalite and slime, it can be found living in deserts and tundra. Oh, I'm getting hungry. Is there anything to eat? Only fish? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. This is the Paku. It's a fish that somehow developed a mutation allowing it to float via psychic power and inhabits temperate biomes and tropical swamps. This strange fish comes in two more variants, the tropical Paku in arid shrublands and deserts, and the gulp fish, which lives in cold bogs and boreal forests. That's a pretty big difference. It's the only aquatic creature in the Oni mod since the poke shell isn't actually a water-dwelling crab, so if you're specifically looking for fish meat, this is the creature to breed or fish for. Now let's have a look at the Slickster. This tiny creature looks like a 
a living carpet, an eh, oil spill maybe, and functions as a fuel converter which sucks in carbon dioxide and produces chem fuel. The Slickster is basically an alternative to the hatch, just a bit harder to train and handle. With the trade-off of a better product, it also lives in harsher conditions, in arid shrublands, deserts, and extreme deserts. No question on which one's cuter though. The Slickster comes in two morphs. The first, the long-haired Slickster, is pretty unique. How? Well, it's the only creature in this mod that can nuzzle, losing the ability to produce chem fuel in exchange. The other morph, the Molten Slickster, takes things in the opposite direction. With a very hot biome preference at 75 to 270 degrees centigrade, you definitely don't want to nuzzle this guy. It does, however, provide double the chem fuel output. And next we have the Morb. Ugh. Honestly, all you need to know about the Morb is that it's a useless pest that only exists to punish uncleanliness. Morbs are untrainable, don't supply any animal products, and live pretty much forever unless taken out. Having Morbs in an area prevents other creatures from spawning, and these blob creatures also explode on death. When there's a Morb infestation, you've got to take some drastic measures. We've got two more creatures on this list, the Show Vol and the Gassy Moo, which are a weird drill-like creature and a flying green cow manatees, respectively. Out of all the Oni creatures, the Show Vol and Gassy Moo provide the most amount of meat when butchered at a whopping 320 pieces each. The Show Vol provides no other products, while the Gassy Moo also produces chem fuel. Pretty handy, I'd say. Bear in mind that both of these creatures can't be found in the wild, only purchased from traders and subsequently bred. They're also morphless. All right, that's the creatures done with. Wow, those are some weird and amazing creatures, aren't they? I've never seen anything quite like them. If you have any comments on the creatures, or even suggestions or questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Maybe I'll invite you to my zoo to view some of them. Now, let's move on to plants, meals, and the miscellaneous features. The Oni mod generates a wide variety of plants across biomes that you can harvest, grow, and even use as decor. Let's talk about harvestable plants first. These are your bread and butter plants for all your supply needs needs, from textiles to food to lumber. What? No, of, of course not. There's no actual bread and butter growing on plants. Stop bothering me during my presentation. Each harvestable plant has a harvest timer and yield. For example, the nosh sprout takes 21 days to fruit fully and produces six nosh beans. After a plant has been harvested, you won't be able to get any more produce out of it until the timer resets. Here's the full list of harvestable plants. Each biome has its own yield, so be sure to keep your eyes peeled for new finds when exploring. Then we have the decorative plants. These plants don't produce anything except happiness. Jokes aside, these these plants are no less important than harvestable plants. Decor plants boost the beauty of an environment, which is one factor contributing to your colonist's happiness and overall productivity. As they say, a happy colonist is a productive colonist. There are only five decor plants in the Oni mod. Third, we have wild plants. They're pretty much just there to create atmosphere in a biome, and you can't harvest them to use them as decor. Oh, and there's also a rather unique plant, the Weezwort. Classified as an exotic building, this strange heat-absorbing plant functions as an air cooler that doesn't need fuel to run. Good things don't come cheap though, and you can only buy its seeds from traders for around 1,000 silver. Speaking of usefulness, harvestable plants can be made into food. Food is divided into five categories, simple, fine, lavish, soul, and awful, with every category except awful and soul requiring different levels of cooking skill. Simple food is, as the name implies, basic stuff. It won't thrill your taste buds or send you on a magical journey, but it still fulfills its main purpose, good nutrition. Fine food is a step up, delighting both the taste buds, which provides happiness, and the stomach. Of course, it takes more effort and skill to make, so like everything else, there's a trade-off. Then we have lavish food. It's fit for a king. Naturally, lavish food is the hardest to make in terms of ingredients, effort, and skill. Worth it, though. The latter two categories, awful and soul food, provide unique status conditions. Awful only contains one item, the mush bar, which is mentioned in the creatures section, which debuffs pawn stats when eaten. It's meant to be a last resort when you have no other food. Makes sense, eating dirt isn't good for your health or your mood. Soul food, on the other hand, provides a pretty substantial gluttonous joy bonus when eaten. There are only two soul food items in the Oni mod, crushed salt and frost burger. Save these food items for when you need a quick pick-me-up in terms of mood or hunger. Alert! A new disease has been discovered in the base. Oh no, that must be the Oni mod slime lung disease. It's a more contagious version of the plague from the base game, causing a bigger effect on manipulation and breathing as victims sneeze constantly. 
The oxygen not included mod is a very faithful recreation of the original game's creatures, food, and plants, which mesh well together with RimWorld's own features to create a new experience. If you want to try something new, or you've grown bored with the base game, check out the Oni mod. I hope you enjoyed this video on the oxygen not included mod. Be sure to check it out and let me know how you feel about it in the comments below. You can also drop all your suggestions and questions below as well. Have fun exploring and hunting. Don't forget to click on the next video. I will see you next time, next Friday. Or later. Or if you have the Noobtopia mod for RimWorld, maybe I'm in your colony. Who knows? This is a really strange way to exit a video.